Betting Sportsbook app. Use promo code GLOVES and make it rain. The money line has favored Crawford. Many of the experts feel like a little too much. Winner by KO, plus 115. Crawford, plus 1,100. Porter, value obviously Porter if you buy into it. Now, here's where it gets interesting on the prop bets. Will the fight go the distance? Plus 130 for an attractive no. Over under is being set at 10 and a half rounds. 10 rounds completed halfway through the 11th. The under is plus 205. And around the sharps here in Vegas this week, there's a lot of action coming in on the group round bets in the later <laughs> rounds, but that's what's happening with DraftKings. So Terrence Crawford making his final preparations as he will get set for his ring walk. Take us through the film room and the lab that way you have it, Tim Bradley, for Terrence Bud Crawford. Well, let's check it out. Crawford needs to wait for this opportunity because Sean Porter will give him opportunity. You see the lunge there from Sean Porter. And this is what Crawford does when guys lunge forward. He drops level, go down to the body, and not only does he attack moving backwards, he also attacks moving forward afterwards. He's gonna look to make Sean Porter pay every time he misses a shot. And you don't always have to shoot punches. You can make, my, make guys miss. Beautiful work right here by Crawford. Going around Ole just to get back to the center of the ring. In the juke, Sean Porter has a tip-off combination. Starts off with a double jab, right hand, and another jab. Well, Terrence Crawford, he has the juke, half hook, half jab that he can land right around one of those jabs thrown when Porter's coming on the way in. Moments away from the world title fight, but let's wrap up our title eliminator after the clash of heads, and we will go to the scorecards. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Tonight's main event will change two lives forever. It'll bestow great good fortune on the winner at the expense of the loser. That's boxing, it's always the case. The difference here is that these two guys go back, these two guys are connected, these two guys are old friends. We have enormous news from boxing. It is official, undefeated Terrence Crawford will face Sean Porter for Crawford's WBO welterweight title. I called him up last year. We spoke on the phone. The first thing I said to him, I said, yo, man, I love you. There was like a little hesitation and all that. He's like, what's up? <laughs> I, said, I said, man, I love you. What was the purpose of that call? To make a fight. <laughs> You might be the only guy in the whole world that tries to make a fight by starting a conversation with, I love you. Boom. We made a pact. I said, if we're going to fight, let's do it because we want to do it. Nobody's going to make us fight. If we fight, it's because we want to do it. In fact, Porter had known for some time he was destined to fight his dear friend, the WBO champion. It was an epiphany that came to him the night of October 13, 2018 started to take a look at Terrence Crawford when he beat Jose Benavidez. I watched that fight by myself, glued to the TV, fan of Terrence Crawford, of course, and I'm watching and I'm like, this dude is shining. There it is again. No mistakes at all. Crawford is easily in control. Very hard to do in the sport of boxing. Oh, my, oh, my. I have to fight this guy. There was a piece of me that didn't want to get in the ring with him because we do have a friendship. But then there's the other part of me that's pure competition. It's like, yo, that's great, and I want to be a part of that. Porter and Crawford went back to their teams, friendship dating to their formative years on the amateur circuit with USA Boxing. He wasn't the guy that everybody was trying to hang around or anything like that. I actually gravitated towards that. My whole thing was just, like, hang out with this dude. Nobody else is doing it. Terrence Crawford has always had a short fuse. Terrence would get so angry that his eyes would well up and he would tear up. And people looked at him like he was soft, but they didn't understand. That's anger. And that's how his anger comes out. 
My dad has hung on to this story where, you know, Terrence had got into an altercation. We were at a U.S. tournament. I had words with Terrence at the tournament about something, mm -hmm. and I happened to be walking through this darkly lit area, and he was coming through at the same time. And we faced off like gunfighters. Fist balled up, he's just mad, he's angry. And my dad <laughs> sized him up, he said, I could tell that Terrence wasn't going back down, so I left him alone because we could end the fight. That's who Terrence was. And it was crazy because even then, he didn't just walk away. He turned with me and watched me the whole entire time until I walked away. Fist stayed clenched? Oh, fist stayed clenched the whole time. The intervening years have seen Crawford win titles in three divisions. But Crawford on top of the world! And become a fixture atop the pound-for-pound -pound lists. Porter, meanwhile, is a two-time welterweight champion and the division's most richly experienced fighter. Porter, just too strong. Still, from Porter's perspective, it's their past that informs the present. I know Terrence. I know what makes him uncomfortable. I'm gonna touch some nerves in the lead up to the fight. Every nerve that I touch is gonna be the right nerve to have him in the right place emotionally. What nerves and what makes him uncomfortable? Terrence doesn't like you talking about him. He does not like to be doubted. <laughs> Terrence will allow the smallest of things to get under his skin and affect him. He's always been in the ring with guys who've allowed him to have fun, who've allowed him to be comfortable. This is gonna be that time that he doesn't. You said, my legacy will depend on beating Terrence Crawford. This is the biggest fight of my life, and you gotta win this one. My legacy becomes, John was really good, but he couldn't win the big ones. I can't allow that. There's a strong likelihood that I knock him out. I've seen myself dominate Terrence Crawford. But in a realistic world, this is a back and forth battle. It's gonna have everyone on their feet every single round. Who's the best welterweight in the world? Respectfully, Terrence Crawford. Not Sean Paul? I'll let everyone say that after the fight. I get Sean saying he wants to press Terrence's buttons, but Terrence isn't the same spindly angry kid that he was years ago, and, and Sean has changed too. He has three losses to a prime Kell Brook, a prime Keith Thurman, and a split to Errol Spence. The central question to me, fellas, is what has he learned from each of those losses, and how can he apply it against Terrence Crawford? We're going to get answers to many questions in just a matter of moments. This scene here, as we take you inside the arena, this is what it's all about. Folks, if you want to know what should be on your bucket list as a sports fan, Come to Vegas for one of the really big ones because, Max, we just glanced at each other. The air changes, right? The air changes. It's changed. Timmy, you know what it's like to actually win this title. June 9th, 2012, you defeated Manny Pacquiao to win this version of the Welterweight Championship. Your final thoughts on what we're about to see here. You know, let me just take you into a fighter when you're walking out and you hear the crowd roaring and you hear your music playing. You can hear your own heartbeat. That's what you can hear, your own heartbeat as you're walking out and getting into that ring. You know, it's time for both of these men to face their fears. Trust me, a guy you've been training for for the last two to three months, having sleepless nights, you know, you've been praying over, you've been, you know, spending time away from your family. It comes down to this one moment in a few minutes we're about to have. And both these men put their life on the line for something that they absolutely love, and that's boxing. And to be the best, that's what it's about. Give me a yes, no, does this fight go the distance? It's not going the distance. Mark Pringle, final thought. From Delahoy to Pacquiao to Mayweather, this has been boxing's glamour division. But since Mayweather left the stage, a lot of sound and fury, but not much resolution, not much consensus. What happens tonight will change the way you think about this division. Is Terrence Crawford, with those of us up here saying he's been for many years, the best fighter in the world? Or will Sean Porter finally win his Super Bowl? Max? Sean Porter is pretty obvious what he's about to bring. 
and either Terrence Crawford can control that, and if he can, oh my God, he's made his point. He's made his point to Canelo. Maybe he's the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. And if he can't control it, then oh my God, we have another welterweight classic on our hands. Sean Porter, in those three losses, Kel Brook, he lost decisively. Yes. Keith Thurman was close. Errol Spence, who's the best of the three, was a split decision in one of the best fights in at least 10 years. He's getting better and better as he gets older. If he can take another step, he will push Crawford to the limit. And then the only question is, what is Terrence Crawford's limit? I suspect it is very, very high. <laughs> you mentioned three guys? Yep. Guess what? He's fighting all three guys tonight in one guy in Terrence Bud Crawford. All right, let's bring in the guy who was the number one pound-for-pound -pound undefeated fighter, Andre Ward. Tess, tonight is what both of these fighters have wanted. And it's a legacy fight for both guys for different reasons. Sean Porter, like we mentioned earlier in the show, he wants to be remembered as the guy that just wasn't willing to take the big fights, but that he can win the big fight. And what bigger fight to win than against Terrence Crawford? Tonight is his opportunity. And for Terrence Crawford, he's been dogged by critics saying that, yeah, you're cleaning out 140 pounds and becoming undisputed. That was good, but you haven't fought anybody of note. Your resume is weak. We know you're a good fighter, but how good? Well, tonight, the table is set, the stage is set for Terrence Crawford to show the world just how good or great he really is. There it is. There is the way he's honoring marvelous Marvin Hagler. The vintage velvet robe with the same exact script that says marvelous. And then on the team, you see the big block letters that read war. Will we have something that even comes in the neighborhood of some of the great Hagler fights? Porter says he's committed to it. The stage is set. It is time, and we will begin with our national anthem and up to the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, before we bring out our fighters for the main event, at this time we ask you to rise for the singing of the national anthem. Please welcome to the microphone recording artist Brandon Brigham. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stores through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting Still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave?
Vegas has a unique way of taking all of this pulsing energy and funneling it into one 24 by 24 foot ring. Through the years, it matters most when the Mandalay Bay puts on the mega show. Last generation held all the biggest bouts right here. Lennox Lewis, Trinidad, De La Hoya, Sugar Shane, Tarver, Roy Jones. The all-time thriller we had with Castillo Corrales right here in this ring. And now the big test for Terrence Crawford. Can the unbeaten best in the biz, the finisher, do what no one has done to Sean Porter? Or will Porter get to a place that Crawford's never been to? Once there was a king who left neither an heir nor a clear path to succession. A lot of the guys took a shot, but none more than him. Showtime! Show. Each of these trials left the fighter wiser, stronger, even more desirous of that crown. But have they prepared him for this? Greatest test of all comes in the guise of an old friend, long denied all those same opportunities. They are each sober warriors, family men. One marches to his father's cadence. Get back on defense like I ask. Yes, sir. The other here is his mother. I wanted him to be a man. Don't be afraid of nobody. My, oh my! One relentless. Just nails him! The other practiced and precise in his use of violence. That man is the best in the world. A happy warrior and one who smolders, each at the peak of his power. But the calculus of combat changes when fighting a friend. It's not merely what you know of yourself, but what you know of him. What you really know, down to the beat of his heart. Long live the king. Who will be the king tonight? King of the welterweights to be determined. Raiders owner Mark Davis has made his way to his ringside seat. John Porter takes such great pride in his faith. He's got Bible verses adorning his bespoke dress shirts. Children given Hebrew names honoring God. And he has a special plan ring walk. That includes some special guests on a night when he honors marvelous Marvin Hagler, the late great middleweight champion and the ultimate fighters fighter. Porter makes that turn, and you see the stained glass in the background. And joining Sean Porter for his ring walk. Maybe you know that voice and that intensity.
the WWE champion who came cross country and going back to be in the ring of Roman Reigns is bringing out Sean Porter and Rhapsody and the gospel choir backing them up. One of the most beloved and likable fighters of this generation. And what a ring entrance for what could be the signature moment of his career to topple the undefeated Crawford, to become a three-time welterweight world champion. Saying he's going to push Crawford like nobody has ever pushed him. And now, with a crowd that's been overwhelmingly in support of Crawford all week long, you get the sense that most of Omaha booked a trip out to Vegas. Terrence Crawford is ready. And he's going old school. I'm bad by LL Cool J is the choice. was released in 1987, the year Crawford was born. Terrence has often talked about what he was born into, what he was raised around, and the way he took care of his business. been honest as you see the vicious finisher he is in saying I was trouble a whole lot of trouble but he has been a great force of good back in Omaha Nebraska and here comes the champ A wonderful dad, loyal to North Omaha and his roots. Opened up a boxing academy, free and ready to any kid who he says works hard in school and is willing to be around that crowd to work hard in the ring. But understand what fuels him. So much of what fuels him, the way he finishes fights, the way he looks through a rival, it is sourced by his difficult and dangerous past. I'm bad by LL Cool J with the notable lyric of slaughter competition. That's my hobby and job. And that has been the job of Terrence Crawford for 37 fights and 28 knockouts. The best closer in the show. For the official introductions, 
of our World Championship fight. Here's the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Michelob Ultra Arena here at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Bob Aram's Top Rank Incorporated and TGB Promotions live and exclusive on ESPN Plus Pay-Per-View. Sponsored by Disney Plus's Hawkeye, UFC 269. Don't miss it. Saturday, December 11th exclusively on ESPN Plus pay-per-view and DraftKings Sportsbook. This bow to sanction by the WBO, the president and supervisor in attendance, Francisco Valcarcel, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the chairman is Stephen J. Kuhlbeck, executive director, Bob Bennett. Our judges scoring from ringside, we have Max DeLuca, Dave Moretti, and Steve Weisfeld. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Welterweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, it's time for the main event of the evening. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing black trunks with orange trim, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada by way of Northeast Ohio. He weighed in at 146.6 pounds with a record of 31 wins, three losses and one draw. He has 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight in his eighth world title appearance, here is the accomplished WBO number two ranked world contender and the relentless and renowned two-time welterweight champion of the world, introducing Showtime, Sean Porter. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with black trim, proudly representing his home of Omaha, Nebraska. He weighed in at a ready 146.4 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 37 wins, no losses, 28 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight in his 16th consecutive world title appearance, presenting the star of boxing and pound for pound great. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former lightweight world champion, the former undisputed 140 pound world champion, and the current undefeated reigning and defending WBO welterweight champion of the world introducing uh, Terrence Bud Crawford and our referee now to give instructions uh, Celestino Ruiz okay Gentlemen, I gave you guys your instruction in the dressing room. I expect a clean, fair fight, start to finish, and protect yourself at all times. Touch up, good luck. Those eyes of Crawford lock in now. The eyes of a skilled hunter. We've seen it time and again. And for years, we've watched Terrence focus in and finish off opponents. Yet over that span, folks, you know there have been the elusive big-name targets. The man opposite him on the right of your screen, Sean Porter, he doesn't care that Bud is supposedly just too dangerous. He doesn't care about promotional adherence. He cares about this challenge and the legacy. Can Porter pull it off? Or will this be Crawford's statement night? We find out right now. We are underway for the welterweight championship, and Porter comes right out. Steps right to Terrence Crawford and threw a combination. As we thought he would. Andre Ward and Tim Bradley with me. Joe Tessitore ringside here in Vegas. Andre, there's a distinct work rate pattern to Terrence Crawford in welterweight title defenses. 
He's economical early. He averages 28 punches thrown in the first round of those fights. That's a low number. It's half the usual welterweight output. Do you believe that makes for a grand opportunity for Sean Porter if he's too economical? It can, but that's who Terrence Crawford is. He's not going to change tonight unless he's forced to change by Sean Porter. Terrence likes two or three rounds to get his game plan, gauge distance and range, and understand what he wants to do. It's to Sean Porter's advantage to press the issue and not allow Crawford to do that. I like what Porter's doing now. He's marching forward, but he's changing his rhythm, changing slots, moving his head, coming hot behind the double jab. And when he gets close, he's letting his hands go. Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. I got it. Turn around, turn around. Turn around. And if Porter can steal some early rounds, it creates a sense of urgency in Crawford, which may draw him into a fight instead of a boxing match. This is what's called controlled aggression by Sean Porter. Not reckless, controlled. Coming behind the jab, staying disciplined, keeping his balance, not lunging forward, inching closer and closer to Crawford. Crawford kept his composure this whole round. Didn't seem rattled at all. Didn't seem wide-eyed. He's fought in front of big crowds before. He knew Sean Porter would come forward. It was no surprise to Terrence Crawford. Crawford right now, he's calculating the speed, the distance for Sean Porter. He felt the power already. But that nervous energy right there, look at how Porter smart, step back. Didn't want to crowd Terrence Crawford. And even below the numbers that we detail. Tell you some of the celebs and sports personalities who made their way in. Frank Thomas. Josh Taylor's the undisputed 140-pound champion. He's a dynamic force in the fight game right now. Maurice Hooker, recent champion, has put forth some great efforts and entertaining fights. One of the greats from the last generation, Fernando Vargas, seated ringside for this welterweight championship fight. And the next great one, according to most, now two-division world champion, Shakur Stevenson, and the man that he defeated to take the 130-pound title, the fighting Marine, Jamel Herring, who served our country admirably for nine years, and then the former undisputed junior middleweight champion, Winky Wright. Floyd Mayweather's dad, Floyd Sr. Always a fixture in the Vegas fight scenes. Round number two in that first round, Sean Porter landed six of 29. Crawford landed three of 15. I think that's exactly where Porter wants to be. Not the whole fight, but certainly in spots to hit the body of Terrence Crawford to try to slow him down and to cause him to get uncomfortable early in this fight where he starts to press. But you can see the patience also from Porter. He's just not rushing in there. He's thinking before he makes any move. Well, he has to with a guy that can hit and has timing and quickness like Terrence Crawford. Things can get ugly quick. Tried to catch him with that check hook from that southpaw stance did Crawford as Porter came forward that time. Porter's fought a lot of different styles, but he's never fought a lot of different styles in one man. 
And that's who he's facing tonight. He's facing a southpaw, a guy who fights left-handed, an orthodox fighter, a guy who can box, and a guy who can fight, and a guy who can hit. Good shot right there from Sean Porter. Sean Porter responds with the right hand after Crawford threw the right hook. Those are the surprising combinations that Porter is great at doing. Doesn't matter what position he's in, you got to be cautious and be ready every time he comes in. Right hook by Crawford right there, got Porter's attention. Sitting right on top of the orthodox fighter. Porter just able to get away from the uppercut. Good exchange on the inside. Good action here in round two. Crawford lands a right hand. Porter so willing. Porter got the best of that. Sure did. Here come Bud. Crawford trying to time that backhand for a moment. I think boxing is slowly going out of the mind of Terrence Crawford. He doesn't like getting hit flush. He doesn't like the reaction of the crowd, even though this is a pro, uh, pro Crawford crowd. He wants to get some get back. You see that in his eyes and in his demeanor right now. To the body to finish off an entertaining second round. <laughs> Heavy exchanges in this round. Porter got his. Crawford got his. That shot right there to the chest may not seem like much, but that hurt. A sweeping left hand from Crawford in a beautiful time. Right hook. Call it a check hook by Terrence Crawford. And Sean Porter took it well. Thank you. Getting where you need him to be. Give me a set first and second series of punches. Make sure when you decide to go hard, it's an advantage to you, okay? Don't just go hard just because he hits you or he touched you. You get touched with something, blow off of it into your head movement, hands up. Come back up and get that in sweat. You good? You starting to feel it? Okay, all right. Hey, don't get into a car fight with this motherfucker, all right? Just keep boxing me. Bo Mack, Brian McIntyre, the trainer of Terrence Crawford, said don't get into a firefight with Sean Porter. Meanwhile, Kenny Porter, the trainer father of Sean Porter, was giving his son advice in terms of how to react when Crawford does touch him. So both trainers want guys composed, collected, and sticking to the plan. That second round was something. Porter was 12 of 34. Crawford was 11 of 36. Lomack is going to have to remind Terrence Crawford often to not get into a firefight, but to box. Not sure if Crawford's going to listen. You wonder what's slowing down Sean Porter. It's the southpaw stance of Crawford. When he was in orthodox stance, Porter was able to land his jab and get inside. Now from the southpaw stance, he has to battle the lead hand of Terrence. Porter starting to lunge a tad bit when he comes behind his jab. That's what Porter does when he gets over anxious and he starts to reach for a taller man. And that could be very dangerous against this guy, Terrence Crawford. But attempted right there, the uppercut as Porter lunged forward. Terrence is starting to find his rhythm. As soon as he starts landing his jab, he starts getting comfortable. Here comes a turn from Porter. As soon as Terrence attacks, Porter's going to try to turn Terrence into that corner. That's why he's sitting there. There it is. Good eye, Tim. Ooh. But it's coming. To the body with the right hand goes Porter. Bud saying, you want some of that? You oh, want that kind of exchange? Yeah, he likes it. It's over now. Bud is here. A fight about to break out now. 
There's a cut on the eye of Porter. It looked like there may have been a clash of heads on that last exchange when both men came in. Remember, Southpaw and Orthodox, you can often get that angle where the head comes into play. So there is blood now around the right eye of Sean Porter. That is not a knockdown. Doesn't look like much, but Porter had to pick himself off the canvas. That takes some of the energy. Now they're wrestling against the ropes. And they're jawing right through it. And Terrence is playing into it. <laughs> Focus, huh? Headbutt. Headbutt. We got a headbutt, man. Yo, ref. We got a we got a clash of heads. I called on a really accidental headbutt. Thank you. Watch your feet. South Palm versus North Ducks. There it is. There it is. Accidental Terrence coming headbutt. inside. Beautiful uppercut okay. in the inside by Sean Porter. Hey guys, watch your feet, all right? And then here's the moment where they tie up and Porter went falling down. And then the end of the round. Yeah, sure, they've been friends since the amateur circuit. It's a fight. It's a fight. But Porter right here, seeing how strong Terrence is, he's showing them. Former high school football star against a wrestling fanatic, a father of two wrestlers who are collecting trophies, Tyrese and Little T. Round number four, punches through three, 25 to 20, Porter. Ooh. Beautiful surprising Coming. hook right there from Porter. Coming into this fight, Porter's been cut 11 times. The majority of those cuts have come on the right eye, so there's a lot of scar tissue there. Not surprised that his eye has opened up this early. It's very noticeable when you're with him. Looks like railroad tracks when you talk to him around that right eye, and now there's blood coming from it. This is the urgency that I was talking about that Sean Porter Good left from hand from Crawford. Good shot right there to the body. But you see Crawford is not thinking about boxing. He's thinking about fighting. And then very accurate with the right hand as well. Puts him off balance again right to the chest. You see Porter being patient more than usually in fights because he feels those punches coming from Crawford and those sharp counters. It's good to be relentless. It's good to have aggression, but it can't be too much of a risk-reward fatal flaw. His attacks has to be explosive. Yes. They got to be sharp, accurate. After Terrence miss or throw something like that. As he bounces and then comes forward with the right hand. What Crawford is having issues with right now is the sneak attacks from Sean Porter. They're so explosive and so fast that Crawford doesn't have time to compute what's happening and before he knows that he's been hit. Dynamic fight early on. Fascinating fight early on. The athleticism of Sean Porter. The skill and accuracy of Terrence Crawford. Don't punch, don't punch. I don't think pulling back is the answer for Crawford. I think he's got to have a tight guard and allow Porter to open up. And when he opens up, you get your shots off just like that. Pulling back from a shorter arm guy that's as explosive as Sean Porter is not a good idea. There's another left hand trying to dig underneath as Porter came forward. Crawford's been trying to test that body a bit. Crawford's doing the right thing by going down to the body, trying to slow down Porter. Hoping that Lunging that with the right hand, he gets out of the way, and all of a sudden Porter goes face first into the neutral corner. Ole, Tess, Ole. Here comes the turn, the pivot. Short left hand from Crawford as Porter comes out of that position, and we finish up round four. Man! is this intense early on.
cuff right there from Terrence Crawford just turning Porter. The Cubans are known for doing that. That's a Cuban move right there. Turning, cuffing the head there, pushing the guy in the corner. But why did he do it? Porter was lunging forward, trying to catch and trying to corner Terrence. Al Chernoff is the cut man for Sean Porter. He is tasked with handling that right eye that opened up due to an accidental clash in round number three. Double right hand right there from Porter sneaks in. Here, Kenny, his father, saying, Sean, go left, go left. Right now, he's circling right, and that is right into the range and the track of the backhand, the power hand, Terrence Crawford. Mm. Let's look at Andre Ward's card through four rounds, 39-37, Porter. Tess, I could have easily given Crawford one of those three first three rounds. Good shot right there from Porter, but Porter would always do just enough to kind of eke out the round, and Crawford would give up that one or two blows that would seal the round for Sean Porter in my book. I would circle the second round as potentially the round that could swing the other way, but it's understandable that you have tight rounds beyond the first. Let me just tell you this, if Crawford thinks Porter's going to slow down, he's not. He's not going to slow down. He's going to be this intense and bring this type of intensity all night long. Well, Porter's not even as intense as he normally is. He's being very thoughtful and methodical. He'll have tense moments, but he's not wrestling inside and digging to the body like we've seen him in the past. So you're right. I don't think Porter, at this pace especially, is going to fade. I just spoke with Bo Mack, who trains Terrence Crawford, and he told me, I want Terrence to box more because... That will open up the shots that he needs to can land on Sean Porter. There's Porter coming in with that relentless aggression that he's known for. Terrence covering up as Porter tries to get around that guard. Terrence smiles at him and pushes him away. Doesn't matter that it doesn't hurt. Sean Porter's piling up points. That's exactly right, Dre. Porter right now is fighting the perfect fight. Being athletic, using his hand speed, using volume, roughing up Terrence on the inside right now. Watch your head, Both you guys. Changing rhythms. Now at range, trying to place that left hand right to the body. He does a few times. And then goes on the attack to close out the round, does Terrence Bud Crawford. There is Miss Deborah, his mother, who's always a fixture ringside and a concern. Now Sean Porter's wife, Leticia, she's looking up at the big screen. Imagine what it's like for the families. Let him get all those shots off without throwing nothing, all right? It might not mean shit to you, but it might look good to the judges, okay? All right? Hey, hey, he don't got no power no more. You see, you can feel it. I see you pushing him back. Push him back behind that jab, all right? You got to keep boxing. Keep boxing. Keep boxing. Box behind that jab. In combination, when you get on the inside, okay? Get your hands go. Dre, Bomax said the same thing that you expressed with your analysis of, hey, you're letting him come up and just touch you at times. It may not matter to you. You're not being affected, but it matters to the judges. That's exactly what his trainer told him. Not and only now, the judges, but, but it's allowing Porter to get into a rhythm, to gain confidence. 
and it's forcing Bud to press because he knows he's behind, at least on my scorecard. Look at this from Bud Crawford the scorecard. early on in round six, as you see the head movement from Porter, but not able to dodge all of it. Here comes Porter, Porter now comes in. Back and forth they go. I don't know if I saw some blood coming from the right ear or left ear of Terrence Crawford. I don't know if it's Porter's blood or not, but that's not a good sign. Go forearm to the neck and a pat on the back from Sean Porter. Oh, good body shot right there. Sneak. He has been able to get that left hand to the body a few times here in the first half of this fight. He's landed 11 body shots as Bud Crawford. But if you're Terrence Crawford, this is what you wanted. You've been arguably the best fighter in the world, give or take <clears throat> one through three over the last few years. But individuals, oh, critics, so fans, they, they got questions. And Sean Porter's asking those questions of Terrence Crawford tonight. It's a great opportunity for him to answer. Porter just crossed that threshold, and Crawford was quick to throw the left hand. Trying to cut off with some of these, the ring there. Yeah, to and your point, again. Tess, some of these rounds are close, but the, even the body language of Sean Porter can suggest that he's in control. And now this clash ahead here in the six opens up a cut on the right eye inside, right on the brow of Terrence Crawford. So each man has been cut from an accidental clash. Touch, touch, then power from Crawford. Wide swinging right hand from Porter off the mark. Attempt at the uppercuts from Crawford. In fighting from Porter. High intensity stuff here in Vegas. Sean doing the right thing. He got one hand free. He's swinging with the opposite hand. Bud is landing, but Porter's taking the play almost every time. Back of the trunks, Reed War. On a night, he honors marvelous Marvin Hagler. And at the halfway point, it has indeed been a war. 53 punches landed for Crawford, 54 by Porter. Here's the clash of heads. Crawford right there comes in. Porter actually wraps his arm around. Crawford brings him in. And causes a head, but yeah, he, that was accidental head bump. Crawford getting the worst into that. Dr. Brian Conroy is leaning between the ropes. He has long been the cut man for the champ. Overhand right. Go, Pick your spots where you want to bang. Back on defense. He touched you with something. Flow off of it. Flow off of it. You heard Kenny Porter saying, Pick your spots. Pick your spots, but then back on defense. They really stressed fundamentals in this training camp to go up against Crawford. Of getting your hands back of being in proper position defensively round seven it's the patience the athleticism and sharpness of porter that's giving problems to bud in that last round crawford had a 16 to 10 connect advantage landed 13 power punches Always willing, right? Hands free, gonna fight. So the warning from Silvestino Ruiz about leading with the head. Oh, 
Right now, Sean Porter has fought the perfect fight. A good mix of fighting. Probably less than we thought he was going to do, but good boxing, answering at the right time. His defense has been good. We know that one punch can change it for either guy, but so far, so good for Sean Porter. And a critical word there, the descriptive of mixing oh. it up. There's a right hand from Porter. He hurt. He closed the gap and landed a right hand, but that is what Porter said the other day. He said he'll never see anybody as athletic as Sharp, but somebody who mixes it up. You have to mix it up against Terrence Crawford. And this is war for Sean Porter. It's the art of war. Sneak yep. attacks. It's fighting. It's boxing. It's going away when you want me to come forward. It's a little bit of everything that we're seeing right now from Sean Porter. Crawford has more glaring answers or more glaring questions to answer now than he did before the fight started. Don't punch. Don't punch. Step back. Box. See, the difference is, is that when Crawford, when he lands these shots on anybody else, they fall. But the difference is, Sean Porter is, hasn't failed. He's not going anywhere. And for what it's worth, right, fellas, it looked like Crawford, based on their face, their body language, their energy, or lack of energy, looked like he struggled more with the weight than Sean Porter. If so, you're going to see that show up in the latter half of this fight. Coming to the end of round number seven. Porter landed that right hand in the seventh round. Ooh. And as we come to the bell, an opportunity to check in with Mark Kriegel and Max Kellerman. <laughs> Porter did not like those two left hands. Seven to one, my ass. That, those were the those were the odds coming in. Sean Porter was a seven to one underdog. He should never be a seven to one underdog against anyone. By the way, I gave Crawford the second round. I think so far until that round, it was odd rounds for Porter, even for Crawford. Yesterday, Porter said, "I got to mix it up. I can't take time off. I can't allow him to fight off his rhythm. It has to be my rhythm." To this point, he's been successful in all of that. Mouthpiece with right, the block lettering up. of war. Slide over to your left. Doubling up, right hand, slide over to your right. Take a different angle, and then start up again. Keep fighting him to keep him off balance. Total punches, fairly even. Crawford with a slight edge now, 64 to 60. Good combination, he catches him coming in. Two punch combination by Crawford. And so good countering both off the back foot, off the front foot. And now sharp shooting to the head is Crawford. Good start to round number eight for the champ. Crawford landing some of those, but not all of those. Good defense from Sean Porter. But good punches and good good exchange from Terrence Crawford. 67-66 says Dre. Max Kellerman said he would have flipped the second round to Crawford, but it's that kind of fight. Good people don't understand what a swing round is, meaning it literally could go either way. And it happens Depending often at this level, Dre, right? At this elite, elite level. Those little shots right there from Sean Porter are bothersome. And if they hit you right, they can hurt. Yeah, but again. Don't punch. No, no, no. Right. Box. Here, Terrence actually talking to Sean about the headbutt right there. It's that pop jab right off the hip from Porter. Ooh. Just missing with the left hand as Porter came in. Terrence has to watch that body language because inside he'll turn, he'll do certain things, 
that looks like Sean Porter is in control and he's bullying. Oh, lead right hand from Porter. And another one. Good shot. Various right hands. Porter's doing exactly what his father told him. Ooh, that body shot right there. Wow. Oh, what a good thought from Crawford. Yeah, that was a body shot, but that was an overhand right from Sean Porter that definitely got oh Terrence Crawford's goodness. attention. Each man having success. Porter with a couple of right hands. Crawford comes back with a left to the body as he has done a few oh. times. Goes with it again. I'd rather get hit with a head shot than a body shot like that. Especially those that sound like that, that have that shotgun effect. That was a great eight, wasn't it? Porter coming in behind the jab. Crawford sets him up with a nice body shot. But that looping right hand, that was part of the strategy. I told you guys, straight right hand, looping right hands, that's the main shot that Crawford gets hit with often. But that right there, beautiful step back, create some space, catch Porter as he's coming forward with a beautiful check hook. How you feel? Good. Good. All right. Raise your level of intensity up. Raise your level of competition up. Brian McIntyre, Bo Mac as he is known among the Crawford family and friends, was saying box him, box him, box him. And now the call to order changes of raise your level of intensity. Here we go, round nine. That's been missing from Crawford, the jab. He hasn't been on his jab. He's only landed 21% to this point. Porter's looking for the overhand right. He's looking to slip in behind the jab. He found it in the last round. There's a double jab from Crawford. What Kenny Porter is asking his, Sean, his son, Sean Porter, for is separation. Check hook again from the southpaw. The fight is close. It's tight. Where's the separation? Raise your game. That's what he's asking for. Olay. Crawford able to roll out to the left. Body shot from Porter. Crawford comes back jabbing. Mm. Nice little sneaky body shot from Crawford in the inside right there on the right side of Porter. He's landed 23 body punches to this point with a minute to go in round nine. Looks like Porter wants to take a round off and Crawford needs to take advantage. Left hand to the body again and again. Lead left hand from Crawford. As Porter keeps taking those steps forward. Ooh. See Porter holding on, trying to get himself together. When you get hit with a shot like that, you got to reassess some things. Both guys landing some counters right there, exchanging.
Going underneath with the left hand to the body. Porter, resulting back to his old ways, lunging forward, coming behind the jab, lunging forward, put his head down, boom. Crawford meets him with a nice short uppercut on the inside. Crawford had a 14 to 10 connect advantage in that last round. Had nine power punches overall. 92 to 79 connect advantage for Terrence Crawford. Body work in that last round and the short uppercut that we showed. There are the body punches. 28 and there is the knockdown scored in round 10 by the champ. Terrence Crawford catches Porter early in round 10. And now patiently probing. Seeing what could be behind that jab. There's a combination. There's a lead left hand. Porter looks good on his feet, but not coming forward and firing at Crawford for the moment. There's the overhand right. And another combination. Beautiful work by Crawford. Magnificent accuracy by the champ. trainer slash father embracing the undefeated world champion and the rival trainer years ago Kenny Porter had a heated exchange with Bud Crawford they almost threw at each other but it's nothing but respect now as grown men as champions Barry Hunter, who works the corner of Sean Porter, embracing Terrence Crawford. When he flips the switch, there are a few like him. Congratulations, champ. As he's making the rounds ringside, and now embracing Shakur Stevenson, who he mentors, already a two-division undefeated champion, a U.S. Olympian. What a great spirited effort by Showtime, Sean Porter. Until the end, until that 10th round, when he went down twice. Excellent, excellent fight.
38 and 0 with 29 knockouts. Against a guy that nobody gets rid of. A guy that has been in with the best. A two time welterweight champion who had a split decision loss to Errol Spence. Here's the first knockdown, Timmy. It's all about timing. Told you Sean Porter makes too many mistakes lunging forward like that. Oh. Boom, hit with an uppercut. Terrence stepped right to the side. Created an angle for himself. Avoided those punches. Step back. Double step back. There you go. And then the end of the fight. So the left uppercut is the first knockdown. And watch this combination, Dre. Well, you see Crawford doing what he does best, finish. Oh. He got that right hook in there. Not a shot he really landed thus far up until this point. It's a heavy, heavy shot for any fighter to take, especially this late in the fight. Here we see a half step back. Boom, that's his signature shot that Terrence lands. He missed that, but he came back with the right hook, and it landed flush. Down goes Sean Porter, and I think Kenny Porter stopped the fight, not necessarily because of what happened, but what was to come. Terrence Crawford is the best finisher in the game, and he knew that it wasn't going to get any better for Sean Porter, especially if Sean wasn't himself and was dazed in the head and, and tried to keep off a guy like Terrence Crawford. Kenny was already up on the apron by the time his son turned around. And Dre, I think you are exactly correct. As look at the celebration with Miss Deborah and his family. <laughs> he has his mom, Deborah. He has the mother of his children, Isha, Shantae, and Leticia, his sisters. Everybody has made the trip, and they will be celebrating deep into the night as the belt is still his. Dre, I think you made a great point. Yes, the left uppercut in the first knockdown, vicious. The right hook was to the temple. The right hook was to the temple. And his father knows the way Crawford goes about his business. Yes. It was going to get ugly. And the father did the right thing. And I know Sean's upset. But Crawford finishes in vicious ways. What do you say we make it official? Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 21 seconds in round number 10. A referee in charge, Celestino Ruiz, stops the contest upon request of the corner. He is the winner by way of technical knockout and still the undefeated WBO welterweight champion of the world, Terrence Bud Crawford. What a scene here at the Mandalay Bay. This is the final knockdown that ended the fight in the 10th round. Watch the right hand. A snot flying right hook from the undefeated Terrence Crawford and Kenny Porter, the father, the trainer said it's over. And the Crawford family always led by the energetic Miss Deborah. And guess who we saw sitting ringside? Errol Spence, the other welterweight champion, <laughs> who watched that knockdown, put his hand to his face, and said, I'm out of here. Spence and his guys got up, turned, and walked. Thurman, Spence, Danny Garcia, all those guys just walked up to 154 <laughs> after seeing this performance by Terrence Crawford. That is one of the most likable fighters of this generation, Sean Porter. Nothing but respect for this oh, yeah. man who fought anybody, anywhere, anytime, and Bernardo's with him. Sean, obviously, not the way you wanted the fight to end. What are your thoughts on your father stopping the fight? Uh, no, he's he's doing what he what he uh, what he, he knows he needs to do. 
Uh, I didn't expect that. Um, somebody, we never had a conversation about that. We just kind of always had an uh, unspoken understanding that if he sees what he needs to see, he's going to do what he did. Uh, I didn't expect it. Did you feel that you were in a condition to continue in this fight? Uh, yes. Uh, the, the punch that he was catching me too clean, and I think that that's what my dad saw. I saw it. I felt it. And, you know, uh, I just think that uh, my, my timing was a little off. Great fighter over there. Couldn't, uh, wouldn't allow me to catch my rhythm. That was my game plan going in, not to allow him to catch his. Uh, he's, he's a dynamite dude in and out of the ring. Congratulations. It's a, it was a typical Sean Porter fight. It was competitive. The judges had it very close until the, the stoppage came in the two knockdowns. But you are the only man who has been in the ring with every welterweight of consequence, every welterweight champion of this era. Yeah. Where do you place Terrence Crawford? I knew you'd ask who's the best out of everybody I've been in the ring with. There's it's no doubt that man, I think, hit me more than anybody I've been in the ring with. Uh, he was on point, A through Z. My, the competitor in me, man, won't stop looking at him, wanting to fight him again. He's, and, he's, and he's that good that I want to do it again. Uh, congratulations, but What makes him special, different? You know what? He, 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 he's got it. And I said that uh, multiple times in interviews, inside and outside of the ring, he just has that, you know, on, uh, on, uh, uh, on Jerry Maguire, the, the, the Quan. He's, that's what he's got. So good for him. Now, Kenny, I know that's the toughest decision for a father or a trainer to make. What prompted you to stop the fight tonight? Honestly, his preparation. He didn't prepare like I wanted him to prepare. So that's just, you know, that just makes me say, you know what? I don't want him in that situation. He fought a great fighter. The guy is super sharp. And he's at a deficit. It's like fighting this guy blindfolded when you're in a deficit like that. So I wasn't going to let that happen to him. He looks in great shape, but only you knew what happened in the gym. How would you have liked for him to prepare that you didn't see? Well, I mean, you know, when, when guys get to certain levels, they believe they know what they're doing, and they don't necessarily take all the information. So, you know, this is where we at with it, and I had to make that decision. It's an easy decision for me. It's easy. He lives right across the street from me. I'll be having breakfast with him in the morning. It's easy. Andre Ward said you didn't stop it because of what happened there. It was about what you were seeing could happen. Was that accurate? Oh, no, definitely what he did, you know, and Sean was hurt. And moving forward, this guy is, like I said, he's, he's a sharp fighter. And my kid is at a deficit at that point. He can't defend himself like he should. And I had to protect him. And finally for you, you've been in the corner against every elite welterweight of this era. What makes Terrence Crawford special? I, you know what? To, to just name one thing, I can't, but all things combined, he, he can do it. He can do everything that it needs to be done. Offense, defense, you know, switching sides, speed, quickness, and power. Thank you, Kenny. Sean, as always, thank you for your time. All right, now we have the champion, Terrence Bud Cropper, celebrating with everybody from Omaha who came here to see something special. How would you evaluate what you did tonight against a very competitive and tough Sean Porter? Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank God for blessing me with this victory, because without him, none of this would be possible. You know, shout out to everybody from Omaha that came to see your boy throw down. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. I love y'all to, to death for following me each and every arena that we rock. We're going to keep rocking them out. But Sean Porter, you know, like I said before, I'm going to say it again, I can't say nothing bad about him, you know what I mean? Like, he been in there with everybody. He did what he could. I just was the better man today. It was a, a hard fight. It wasn't easy because no uh, Sean Porter fight's ever easy for the opponent. When did you figure him out? Uh, round one. Okay. Round one. I, fi I, I figured that I had to reach. He had to take chances to get in. You know, uh, I was a little stronger than him. And uh, he was just trying to, you know, do what he normally do, maul, and, you know, push me back. But I used my angles, and, you know, I pushed him back at times as well. Was he everything you expected? Was there anything different? No, no, no. Sean Porter is a good fighter. You know, he was doing some little slick, slick things in there. Made me think it was think a uh, match for a point of time in there. Did you, knew, did you know there in that 10th round, once you dropped him the first time, that the fight was coming to an end soon? 
You said what? Did you know that after you dropped him that 10th round, the fight would be coming to an end soon? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I knew I caught him with a good uppercut. And then when I uh, caught him with another left hook, I seen in his face that he was real hard. And, you know, his dad did the right thing by stopping him because I was coming with vengeance. Errol Spence was right there watching this fight. As soon as the stoppage happened, he walked out. What was your message to Errol Spence tonight? He was at my fight? Yeah. Now that boy said he wasn't going to never. He don't never be at my fights, but now he at my fights. Well, you see what I did, you know, compared to what he did. So that's what happened. As soon as you, the stoppage happened, that's what happened with Errol. Hey, hey, listen. My thing is, who number one in the welterweight division now? Oh, oh, okay, okay. I love it. Who, who you talking to? All right, now the future. The future, Terrence, because the most important thing is you make the decisions on what happens next in your career. What do you want next? Who do you want next? Well, you already know who I want. I I've been calling them out all day. You know what I mean? Maybe I'll go up to 154. Maybe if Spence get his tail out his butt, he'll fight me. You know what I mean? Whatever. You know what I mean? I will whatever. It wasn't about sending a message to Spence, you said, but in the end, you stopped him when he couldn't. What does that mean about you? It's just styles make fights, you know. I, I look at all of us. We all great. You know what I mean? We all talented. We all got different styles. You know, um, he won. I won. So I just look at it like, you know what I mean? No matter how, how the income go, at the end of the fight go, as long as you get the victory, that's all that matters at the end of the day. What did you say to one another? Huh? What did you say to one another? Oh, I love him. You know what I mean? Sean Porter is a real good friend of mine. You know, I told him, you know what I mean? I really didn't want to fight him. You know what I mean? We always said we was going to fight each other. You know what I mean? When the time is right. And I guess the time was right for this fight to happen. You know, I was looking to fight other champions in the division. And, you know, since I couldn't get that, I had to go to the next best thing. Thank you for your time. Joe, back to you. Always honest. Quite refreshing. And very confident and with reason to be. Terrence Crawford, who said Kenny Porter did the right thing. Saying when he landed that punch, he saw it in Sean Porter's face. And now all the congratulations for the champ. And all the conversations will go back to will Errol Spence fight him. Remember September of 2019, in a unification bout, Spence just got past Sean Porter with a split decision. So people said, well, let's see what Crawford does against Porter. Well, you just saw it. Appreciate everybody being with us for this exclusive ESPN Plus pay-per-view. And now, as is always the case with our ESPN boxing coverage, we will have our post fight coverage. It is the state of boxing beginning right now with Max Kellerman and Mark Kriegel. Mark, um, I thought Crawford was up by a bit by the end of that fight. I thought that they were trading rounds. Odd rounds were going to Sean Porter, even to Crawford through six. And then Crawford swept seven, eight, and nine. That's Tommy Hearns we're looking at. A welterweight no one except for Sugar Ray Leonard wanted to tangle with, and it took Leonard's greatest night to beat him. At any rate, Crawford eventually figured Porter out, and he was putting in vicious, devastating body shots throughout. I want to remind people of something. It's not just that Errol Spence had a tough fight with Sean Porter. Errol Spence knocked Sean Porter down late. Notice, Kenny Porter didn't stop the fight then. No. But he stopped the fight now, partly because of what Andre Ward said. Not what had just happened, but what was about to happen. But what was about to happen was a function of what had happened up until then. Crawford was slowly figuring him out, slowly punishing him and breaking him down and eventually establishing himself pretty clearly as the number one welterweight in the world. Look, Sean Porter was at his best tonight, especially for the first half of the fight. 
what he said about rhythm, I can't take time off. It has to be. It was his fight through, through six rounds. Then Crawford became what we've been insisting he is for the past few years. He becomes the first guy to knock out Sean Porter. And Kenny did it, whatever he says, because he knew what was to come. So if you want to argue now, if you want to argue pound for pound, I guess you can argue with Canelo. You want to argue resumes. You cannot argue welterweight. You cannot argue welterweight. No, that's right. And, and by the way, it's not that Terrence Crawford, in my view, suddenly flipped the switch and knocked him out. There was an accumulation. As I said, I gave the first round to Porter. I thought Crawford won. I thought they went odd even. Crawford won the second, mm -hmm. Porter the third, Crawford the fourth, Porter the fifth. Crawford the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Crawford, I felt, took over the fight and was landing the damaging punches, not just figuring Porter out, what's he going to do and how am I going to counteract it, but breaking him down, especially to the body, landing, taking his measure, and landing the damaging shots. And I think the knockout reflected what had taken place up until then. It wasn't simply a flip switch. You, you, however you score the round,